Thank you for being here. surprise and people's kind of snickered uh, and I say that because I like the, the definition they gave of power suppressing people and that's racism because then it's not just about whites and blacks and that dichotomy it's about the system and you can transfer that then to the international world because the guy was in Iraq and we saw the, the Arabs suppressing the Christians and so you can use this same exact definition across the world and not just in America. And the last thing that I just like to say is I really think that something they hit on at the beginning that I don't think was well, well expressed is that I think the bigger issue with a lot of those things in ethics is more along classism of who the wealthy is. Because I don't think people are going to Michael Jordan being like, well, man, and saying bad things. Maybe it's more like they say great things, and that's because of his wealth. Yes, classism is important to talk about, um, absolutely. Uh, and that we do know from people sharing their stories, people like Michael Jordan and Oprah Winfrey, and people that are way at the top in our country, um, uh, they also experience racism on top of that. You know? um, so I just sort of encourage you to think about that too, everyone. You know, that when we talk about classism, people also who have found great um, financial, professional success also see this systemic um, issue in place on top of, you know, despite having wealth. Anyone else? So 
So the question is, after watching this film and oh, and making the film, um, am I racist? It's uh, a great question. No one's asked me that. <laughs> um, I think in the context of how that workshop describes it, um, in that moment that when I went through it, um, it felt okay for me because I understood the point that they were getting at. In my mind, my opinion was that they were saying that I have privilege and that I'm operating in the way that um, I move through life in American society as a white person. I do benefit from the way the system is set up. Um, I would be just like Martha and Sasha way at the beginning of the room. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think I wouldn't go around and say, hey, I'm racist because I'm white, because I think out of the context, it doesn't quite make sense. Um, but I would say that I hold bias, that we all hold bias and prejudice. And I do find, though, that when I talk with a lot of other people who are white, it's sometimes, sometimes it's hard for us to ever admit our own bias and prejudice unless we say, but everybody is racist and everybody has bias. And so we have to think about why you know, those of us who are white want to do that, because we don't want to sort of take on our, our role. white people have this power because they're privileged. I think what we should all take away from this film is that as people, we <coughs> all have the privilege. We are all privileged with that same power, so we need to stop categorizing ourselves and stop labeling ourselves and see us all as people with the same power. Um, I would just like to say that um, I know that I'm racist. I was uh, raised in Wisconsin and my whole town was white people. So part of my racism is cluelessness about people who aren't white. Um, fear, a lot of fear when I'm around people that aren't white. Um, this feeling of superiority sometimes. And this, this feeling of wanting to be accepted by people who aren't white. back to DPS and what that really means here and just um, um, being part of an experience and I also have some other smiling middle school teachers with me, being part of an experience where we felt that system with a really, really hard fist, really, really hard. And seeing that school close after so many years of being in that community and bringing in a, a minority white school and just thinking about next steps and, and how DPS can really move on and ensure that we're not racist? How, what can we do? What can we do? We have to keep our voices in the conversation, push the system to change. We have to look at how we're treating each other, how our kids are doing, how we're treating our gaps, our disabilities, our all issues. And we have to continue to have these kinds of conversations with the community to take action. That's why we started to do this. What are some of the systemic biases or racial attitudes that we have that perpetuate just the things that we talk about? And I think we haven't really talked about those before. As much as we want to think we have, this idea that equity and just inclusion doesn't get to some of the things that you're talking about. So we have to not be afraid to challenge those above us to say these are real issues and they're important and we're not going to let go of them for just the reasons that you said.
And I think it's completely unfair, because I mean, at one point, for all the adults in here, when you were teenagers, you had your own little hip trend, you know, you had the hippie movement, you had all those kind of things, and you know, at your point, that was like, for you, for us, you know, you were sitting in the outcasts as a bad kid, who did drugs and all this kind of stuff. I think those things, the way you should think of us is the same, just, you know, with our own little, like, different look and different music. So, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Caucasians we have in a single digit. 